Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to make these ocean wave knife scales and mount them onto this salt life themed blade. Now this is the first time I've done handles like this. It was an idea I had. I had recently made some ocean wave uh, epoxy resin uh, cutting boards and I just thought it would be really cool uh, to incorporate that same technique uh, into making knife handles. So these are the cutting boards and I had done a whole separate video on exactly how to do it. It's done with a product from TotalBoat.com called their Maker Poxy. A very easy project to do. Um, but I thought it would be just as easy on knife scales. Not quite. It took me a couple of attempts. The first attempt I just used um, you know some white liner material as a background and I, I thought I'd sprinkle some sand onto the resin um, and then create uh, the waves, you know, on either side and then cut them into into the size of scales. So I added my blue um, epoxy and white and I blew it with a hair dryer, dryer uh, like I did on the cutting board. Um, and at first it started to look good. I was thinking that the grains of the sand were too big anyway, but it just didn't work out. The epoxy just kept seeping into the sand. Uh, there was no stopping it and it really um, was an epic fail. So the, the next attempt, I just started with uh, some tan paper as the background. I put that on top of parchment paper so I could lift it off easily. Added my color um, maker epoxy again. I blew it with a hair dryer and the waves came out really good. Um, you know, you could see the, the lacing on the white froth, but that thin paper backing just wasn't gonna cut it. I wouldn't be able to grind that flat. I wouldn't be able to work it uh, into a knife handle. Uh, so that was, you know, epic fail number two. Uh, what I finally figured out was I cast solid blue uh, slugs in my mold, and I used those as the base yeah. of the of the waves. So oh, then yeah. I went and added some, you know, some color. You could add light blue. I added like a turquoise green, a little bit of clear, and behind the clear, uh, the white, um, with the thought that the white is going to flow into the clear uh, to create those waves. Uh, just like on the cutting board, I used a hair dryer on cool uh, just to move that white and get that resin to start to flow uh, into the shape, especially the white of what you're desiring. Now in order to get the, the lacing or cells of the white uh, frothy foam, you can put that hair dryer on warm. Warm up the resin a little bit, creates that lacing. And the plan here is to, to finish the wave, get it exactly the way I want it, and then cast clear resin over this. Another way of creating the lacing is with a butane lighter. Um, and this heats up or warms up the resin uh, without really moving around the, the, uh, the resin as much as the hair dryer did. So either, either technique. So the, the bottom casting of solid blue is done with Total Boat's thick set epoxy. The waves are done with their maker epoxy, which is a little bit thicker, just better for making the waves. Then I put that combination back into uh, my mold. And then I went back to their thick set epoxy, uh, which is, even though it's a, it says thick set epoxy, uh, the mix is actually thinner. It's a very thin resin, which is really good. Um, it allows the air bubbles to very easily float to the surface. It doesn't trap them. It also has a very long set time. In fact, I have to wait almost 24 hours before I can remove it from the mold. Um, and you probably should wait five to seven days before you really, it really gets to its full hardness and you can you know, really work it and polish it. So I, I poured clear resin you know, over my ocean waves and then I, I set this aside for 24 hours. I went out and I found a, a knife blank that I had started before the holidays. It's AEBL stainless steel. Uh, it was already heat, um, the rough bevels were already ground and it was already heat treated. So I really just have to finish it off. I went to uh, my 2x72 grinder uh, with a tilt table a bevel grinding jig, jig mounted to it just to clean up the post heat treat bevels. So I'm really just preparing a blade for the handles. The handles were the main project here. 
Um, but as soon as I started polishing the bevels, I, I thought to myself, you know what, let's, let's do some, some blade etching. And I figured I'd etch uh, salt life right onto the bevels themselves. So I went, I have a, a, a Cameo Silhouette Craft vinyl cutting machine. I cut out a stencil uh, with the words salt life and a little anchor. I use a 12-volt car battery charger set on 2 amps uh, with one of the leads going to a, uh, an etching plate. And I, soak, I wrap that etching plate in gauze. I soak it in an electrolyte solution of white wine, white wine vinegar and salt. And I etch for a total of 3 to 4 minutes in 20 second increments. I never let that vinyl get, or the blade get too hot where the vinyl would you know, lose its self-adhesion. So I cool it maybe every minute or so in, in, in water, and then I hook the leads back up and, and do some more uh, etching. So you, to get a real deep etch that's going to last forever, you, you know, you catch your fingernail on it, I, I find somewhere in that three to four minute range, done in, in 10 to 20 second increments and cooling, at, you know, at least every minute. When that's all done, you peel off the vinyl. Now, I would normally rub this down uh, with maybe a 4 or a 600 grit sandpaper in order to clean up uh, that, that etching. Um, but in this case, because it's on the bevel, I don't want to run the sandpaper you know, against the grain of the bevel. I wanted to clean it up in the, and have the grind lines um, in the same direction as the bevel grind lines. So, so I actually went back to the tilt table uh, bevel grinding jig and the 2x72 in order to clean up uh, the, the uh, etching. And if anybody's interested in these tilt tables, I've got them on, on my website, uh, bergknifemaking.com. It's a, a great bevel grinding jig. So anyway, back uh, to the casting. So the resin is now dry. It's, it's 24 hours later. I'm going to pop that out of the mold. And I think this is now going to work. So what I've got is a solid... Uh, blue background. Um, I've got the ocean waves with the lacing and I've got clear uh, resin which is the total boat thick set poured on top of it. I forgot to mention that that thick set you don't need you know a pressure pot or a compressor. Um, it, it's, it's really nice stuff to work with. So what I'm doing here is I'm now um, back on the 2x72 and I'm grinding away um, some of that backing I don't want a real thick backing. Uh, you know, I only wanted uh, something to hold those waves while I was working on them. So I'm going to grind that down to the thickness that I want. Um, then I'm going to cut down the blade to, to basic size. Not the blade. <laughs> cut down the scales to the basic size. Before I do that, I glued it onto a white liner. I do this on a flat board with parchment paper um, so, that the, so that the glue and the handle materials don't end up getting glued to the board and I, I clamp them all together I let them harden for a few hours. This is a 24-hour epoxy that I use for the, uh, to glue the liners on but usually you know four hours later you can, you can start to work with it. I trim off any excess uh, just with a, a bandsaw. And then I'm going to actually just, you know, cut that scale material in half. So I have, you know, one side for each side of the handles. And I use the North Guard system to mount my handles. So what I do is I finish the front edge of the handles. And I'll polish that, you know, I'll shape it on the 2x72. And I'll also, you know, run through a few belts of grit to a fine grit. Um, and then I'll polish that because you can't polish it after it's mounted to the to the blade. Uh, then I'll glue and clamp one side exactly where I want it, set that aside to dry completely, and then I'll use the holes that are pre-drilled through the blank kind of as my drill guide um, to drill holes through the first, you know, par, uh, first side of the handles. And then I'll repeat the process and glue the second side on. So, so here I've got the first side um, in position, I'm just going to clamp that with several clamps, um, set it aside to dry, usually overnight. I'll clean off, you know, any 
any glue that oozes out with a little alcohol wipe. And once it's dry, then I'll go to my drill press. I've got a backer board uh, in position so I don't get any um, blowout. And then I also have a stop there so that blade can't uh, bind and spin on me. And I'm going to drill the pinholes. Then after the pinholes are done on the one side, I'm going to glue the other side of the handles in position, matching them up exactly where I want them. And then I'll clamp those. And again, I'll, I'll walk away and let those dry. With this epoxy, it probably takes you know four to six hours before you can, you can even think about working on it. Then I'll go back to the drill press and I'll use the holes that I already drilled through side number one as my drill guide. So this final drilling, you're going through all three pieces. You're going through um, handle material, uh, the blade, and handle material. So you get a nice hole uh, that's uniform. Uh, and I just find that I, I ruin less handle material doing it this way. It takes a little bit longer. Um, I'm sure other people have other ways that are faster, but for me, this works. I finished profiling the handles uh, back on the 2x72 of the coarse grit belt. I also am going to uh, bring the thickness of this casting uh, down to where I want it, right on the flat platen. And as soon as I get close, I'm going to get rid of this real coarse grit belt uh, because that still leaves very deep. Um, you know, deep lines into the handle material that can be difficult to get rid of with your with your final polishing. Um, with an 80 grit belt, I usually start to round the edges and really start to shape those handles so that they're going to be nice and comfortable in your hand. I try to do as much work as possible on the 2x72. Uh, it really moves the material nice and fast. I even do the uh, inside curvature as much as I can uh, with the bottom contact wheel on the bottom of the flat platen. Utilize a small wheel attachment just to get at some of those uh, inner curves. And these handles are, are starting to look really nice. I wasn't really 100% sure how they were going to come out. What I did was a hand sand, I, I'm sorry, I went with a oscillating sander 400, 600, and 1,000. I hand sanded then um, with 2,000 and 2,500. Uh, and after that, I went to a buffing wheel with a little bit of compound. I was very happy uh, with the end result. The uh, total boat thick set epoxy, which was the you know that final clear uh, coating, really polished up nicely. Uh, you can see through it beautifully, and you can see all of the white frothy waves uh, you can see the lacing and the cell structure of the waves. I think it complemented uh, the blade etching, the Salt Life blade etching nicely. A very unique, one-of-a-kind knife uh, with certainly one-of-a-kind uh, ocean wave uh, scales or knife handles. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, if you're interested in making your own ocean wave knife handles, uh, contact totalboat.com. Um, I highly recommend both their Maker Poxy as well as their Thick Set. Uh, check me out on the web on my site, www.birdknifemaking.com. I'd like to give you an invite to our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. And by all means, check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out last year called Introduction to Knife Making, and that can be found on Amazon.com. Lastly, I'd love it if you took a minute and left a comment. Thank you very much.